this parameter, this option has existed since Zen 1. In fact, I don't know, maybe it even existed before Ryzen, but it has existed for a very long time. At least first gen Ryzen has had this. So this stands for processor on die termination. This basically means that it is a resistor or it has an impedance value which runs counter to the voltage and the current. So to understand what this is, you have to understand the relationship between voltage and current and resistance. So the voltage, there's a mathematical formula. Voltage equals current, which is abbreviated I, times the resistance. So when you have voltage, you have voltage in volts, you have current in amps, and you have resistance in something called ohms. So, because I've gotten, I've gotten so many comments about, like, I don't even know what this is. Like, what is that? I don't know, I don't know what this is. Like, I get all these comments like, what is that? I don't understand ODT. What is ODT? I don't know what this is. Like, I don't know what that is. Like, what is this? Like, I don't know. I don't understand the video. It's like a cool video, but I don't understand what's going on. So we're going to answer this because it's like, I'm tired of those comments. It's like, I don't mind the comments. I mean, it's good for the YouTube algorithm. And like, keep putting those comments in there. <laughs> like, I don't know what ohms are. But it's like, uh, there's so many comments about this. Or what is this? Or what is ODT? Like, I don't understand. Like, what does it do? Like, what is ODT? There is a... And so I got to looking on the internet when it comes to overclocking. And I, to, my, to no surprise at all... There is very few videos or very few even internet articles or even people on overclocking forums talking about this. Nobody ever talks about this. That's the reason why nobody seems to know what it is. So when I'm talking about it in the video, people are just kind of like, it's just, it just glazes over them. Deer in the headlights. They don't know what's going on. They're just like, okay, uh, whatever. They like blank out for like two minutes of the video and then they come back to the conclusion. Then they go and try to like d do what I did and it's like, uh, it's not working. Like, oh, it's getting a, a BSOD IRQ error. 28 gigs of RAM. I can't get my 128 gigs of RAM running at 6,000. What's going on here? The problem is, so when you have... Let's say we got the CPU. So we have the CPU. We have all four sticks because this the only time this ever comes up is when people are running four sticks of DDR5. It, it's no one ever asks me about this when they're running two sticks. It's always a conversation about four sticks of memory and it's always DDR5. It's always DDR5 and it's always four sticks of memory. And it's almost always dual rank dims which means that the individual is running either 128 gigs of ram or 192 gigabytes of ram or soon people are probably going to be running 256 gigs of ram so the question is just going to keep on coming back over and over again but when the signal is sent to the ram there is a resistance there is a resistive value that sort of, it's used to modulate the signal as it traverses through the circuit. So th there's a resistive value here. So you basically, I mean, you're gonna have a plus and a minus. So you're gonna have some voltage across this resistor. It's gonna be an R value. And it's gonna be something called RZQ equals 240 ohms and ohms the unit for ohms is omega the greek letter omega but i'm using paint so i can't i don't have access to the symbol for omega but anyway the point is you guys know what i'm talking about so every anytime you see rzq it basically means some resistance value or some impedance value it actually means 200 40 
ohms. So wherever you see RZQ, remember in your mind that it means 240 ohms. So, it's actually very convenient that I'm streaming on a Ryzen computer because the Ryzen computer actually has access to something called Zen timings. So this is my computer running right now. You can see the mouse. So this is Zen timings. So the cool thing about Zen timings is you can use Zen timings to figure out for any given Expo or XMP profile that you apply, you can figure out what your motherboard programmed the tertiary and the sub timings, as well as the primary timings, but the primary timings are typically the ones that you see on the RAM kit. And then also other interesting things like voltages, for example. But notice down here in the bottom right, what is all this stuff in the bottom right? We have Proct ODT, which we just talked about. That stands for Processor On Die Termination. Oh, notice there is the Greek letter, the Greek capital letter, Omega. This is not a voltage. And it's not a current value either. It is an ohm. It's a resistance value. This is a resistor value. So the secret to running four sticks of DDR5 at higher speeds, aka 5600 or 6000, I mean, maybe you can do higher than that, but I, I personally haven't bothered to go beyond 6000 with four sticks of dual rank. But the secret in enabling the system to run stable with that much RAM in all four DIMM slots is the resistor values. It's actually the resistor values, it's not the voltage. So you guys can notice, you guys see here, I'm running 96 gigabytes of RAM, as shown in the video. So uh, my voltages are kind of low. You can see VSOC, everybody wants to put 1.3 volts. That's way too much voltage. You don't need that much voltage. I can do 192 gigs of RAM at 1.2 volts VSOC. So it's definitely not the voltage that is needed for the stability. Like you, like you guys can see, I'm only running 1.35 volts on my VDD, my VDDQ, my VDDIO. All this stuff is only like 1.35. In fact, my CPU VDDIO, I can probably lower that to like 1.3. I don't even think it needs to be that high. Um, but anyway, so these are the voltage values in the upper right. But the lower right is actually what matters if you're trying to run a bunch of memory, like four sticks, 128 gigabyte minimum, this is what makes or breaks the stability. Notice all of these in the bottom corner say RZQ. RZQ means 240 ohms, like we said earlier. So this is 240 ohms. So if it says RZQ divided by 5, that literally means 240 divided by 5. And what is that number? 48. That's the reason why in parentheses, send timings automatically does the math for you and it says 48 in parentheses, which basically means my nominal, my RTT nominal right value is 48 ohms. And impedance and resistance, you can think of them as almost kind of the same thing. So anytime I say impedance, it also implies that we're talking about a resistor because it's always going to be an ohm value, not a voltage value. So when you have high impedance, let's say you have the source and you're transmitting to the RAM. So when the impedance is high, the signal strength, if the signal strength starts off here, it will go down in, in strength, in drive strength, as it traverses through the wire, because the resistance is high. The impedance is high, which means the electron flow will be slowed down, or it means that it's going to attenuate your electrical signal. 
So when the impedance is high, if it's too high, what happens? The signal starts out, and it doesn't make it. It doesn't make it to the finish line. It literally, like, dies before it gets to the other end. So you have to retransmit. And maybe on the retransmit, it barely manages to make it. So if you run the impedance at a lower value, you get better signal noise ratio, or you just get better signal strength at the other end. At your receive side, it's able to make it to the finish line. So the problem with high impedance is the signal becomes weak faster. So the integrity of the signal can be compromised if with high impedance. Now let's talk about low impedance. If you have low impedance, it means that you have very little resistance. So if your resistance is too low, what ends up happening? If I can send data, but the resistance is so low that there's like literally nothing to soak the signal, I could get a reflection. It could bounce back. It could bounce before it reaches to the other end. So this is the difference between high and low. With high impedance, you lose signal strength. With low impedance, you get something called reflections. So what is the downside of high impedance? High impedance means DRAM will run hot, overheating, thermal throttling. This is what happens when you have high impedance. Or These are the negative things to take into account when running high impedance. However, with high impedance, the signal quality, the signal received value tends to be better. So your error rate is low when you have high impedance because it can ensure that the data that gets across is valid rather other, otherwise it's invalid. Like if it's low impedance, you get all these reflections. If it's too low, you get all these like signals bouncing back and forth and you, what ends up happening is you get errors due to reflections in the signal. This is the difference. These are the two factors. So if you're overclocking RAM and or like if you're running high impedance, you can basically damage your DRAM because you're going to overheat your RAM. You're going to tune the resistor up so much that the electrical signal basically dies off but if the if you keep trying to pump more voltage or current through a high impedance DRAM you're going to burn it up you're basically going to make it run really hot think of it like a stove like an electrical stove it that thing is the burner is literally a giant resistor because this is basically what we're doing so you're going to cook your RAM if you run high impedance. However, you're not gonna have a lot of errors because, which means you're not gonna be blue screening, but you're gonna have problems with the system even like running because the DRAM will just won't function correctly. So in this scenario, with this, it doesn't post. It fails to post. And it will have to retrain, or worst case scenario, you have to you have to clear CMOS and start over. So that's what happens when the impedance is too high. Now when the impedance is too low, you can typically boot into Windows, but then the challenge becomes stability. Because the RAM is the most important thing that needs to run stable. Like, I can't stress this enough. If the RAM is not stable, you could run into data integrity issues if you start writing data into RAM and then reading data from your RAM and saving it to your disk, like to your SSD. If that data from the RAM was bad, like if it was corrupted data, and then you now save and write that into your non-volatile storage, AKA your M.2 drive or your hard drive or your SATA SSD, or worse, a RAID 0, that would be really bad. 
um, you could corrupt that application or that file, and you could basically lose data. You could lose your files, you could corrupt your games, your game saves could get corrupted. And what's even worse is if you're Steam syncing those and you sync the corrupted save file into the Steam cloud, now you have corrupted your Steam cloud save. So that's really, really bad. So you really don't want RAM to be unstable. So making sure you stability test RAM using things like Memtest 86. Memtest 64 is an easy one. It's free off of Tech Power Up. So anyway, that answers the question that I get all the time. Like, what do I do? You know, I put 128 gigs of RAM and I can't run my RAM at 6,000 and I get a BSOD. What do I do? Well, you got to tune this. You got to tune this. And you have basically the name of the game is lower the impedance as much as possible without running into errors. That's how you get four sticks of dual rank in a 2DPC config working. 